Mindoro. There's already continuous and sufficient power supply in Occidental Mindoro. So doon sa ARC, um, ano po yung status ng power supply agreement for Samarica area, ma'am? Good morning po, uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning to the Honorable Senators. Um, naka, they submitted the um, application for approval of power supply agreement for the Samarica project on May 17, uh, Your Honor. And we have, under the under the rules, uh, the Commission has 75 days to resolve whether we will issue a provisional authority or not. Um, we have had our initial deliberations on the application. Um, unfortunately po, may mga questions pa na kailangang sagutin, particularly on the CSP that was conducted and whether we can really grant a provisional authority at this point. Um, kung maalala nyo po uh, in previous hearings, napaliwanag po namin na itong project po ito ay three in one. So tatlong components dapat yung nandun sa PSA. A solar plant, a, a diesel plant, and a, a bunker a bunker fuel um, plant. Plant. Ang existing pa lang po is the bunker fuel plant. Hindi pa po nila nagagawa yung diesel and solar. Um, as of as of the latest check, nag-deliberations nag po kami ng June, wala pa rin pong nakasubmit na permit yung diesel and solar. So, inaaral po namin, pwede ba naming bigyan ng provisional authority yung isang project na binid out at a single rate for a, for a three-component project kung isa pa lang yung existing and operating. So, yun po yung inaaral pa po namin. And we are, uh, we're confident we can resolve this uh, in, the next, in the next two weeks, uh, Your Honor. Yes, okay. Attorney Di Malanta, ang tanong ko naman ngayon, uh, kumusta naman po yung power supply doon sa uh, Occidental Mindoro? Nagkaka-brownout pa ba? Kasi sabi ni uh, Admin Almeda ng NEA, uh, wala na pong brownout. Is it true? Uh, apo, yung mas on-ground po si Admin Almeda po, pero nagkakausap naman po kami. And so far po, na-confirm naman po niya talaga na tuloy-tuloy po yung supply. Ang okay. tanong na lang po ay, hanggang kailan kaya nila mapapagpatuloy? Kasi nga po, kung wala silang provisional authority, um, hindi po sila nakakakolekta ng subsidy. Kay so dapat po diyan kayo magpagtulungan sa apo. NEA para tuloy-tuloy po yung wala na po power interruption. Apo. So that's good news in a way. Sino nagbibigay ng provisional authority? Kami po. Um, so, ba't pa niya binibigay? Kasi po, may, hindi, meron pong mga legal issues pa po na kailangan namin i-resolve. Particularly, yun nga po. Pwede ba namin bigyan ng provisional authority yung isang project na iisa lang ang rate dapat? Composed of a solar, diesel, and bunker. Kung ang gumagana pa lang ay yung bunker. Ay yung, tama, yung bunker. Opo, yung bunker fuel. Hindi. Kahit naman magbigay kayo ng... Uh, ceiling, kunyari, dun sa mga iba't ibang sources of energy. Hindi naman kailangan lahat available na eh. Dahil hindi naman sila nagre-remit pa sa inyo, di ba? Uh, yun po yung inaaral po namin. Kasi po mukhang nung, CSP, nung nagpa-CSP ito, isang rate lang po, applicable, kumbaga po, blended yung rate na nanalo. So, inaaral po namin, paano kaya nating mag-grant yung blended rate kung isa pa lang yung planta na gumagana, wala kang biniblend. So, Titingnan po namin kung pwede ba namin pong gawin yun. Consistent pa rin po ba in the, to the CSP that was conducted by Omeco. Okay. Uh, thank you, Attorney uh, Di Malanta. Uh, yes, go ahead, Senator Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just on this topic, um, I know before there was a talk of uh, building subsea or underwater cable to connect the island of Mindoro to the mainland. No, And uh, the reason for that, as we all know, uh, Mindoro is um, one of the fastest growing islands of our country. No? Uh, Puerto Galera is there, Palapan City is there, and it's still considered a spug. No? So, hindi na siya spug because of these two uh, fast growing cities. Uh, may I get some updates on that undersea cable, uh, whether that will push through? Uh, is, there, is there any application already from uh, NGCP? And is that part of the uh, transmission development plan? Yes, Your Honor. Um, that There was an application filed by NGCP and uh, in the ERC, we already issued the approval for that uh, for that interconnection project for last year. Maybe uh, NGCP can update us on the status for approval. Yeah, okay. Good. That's good to hear that we have approvals already for that. No? Um, it's been a long dream of uh, the people of Mindoro to connect. Parang Samal Island yan, Gov. No? Uh, but of course, Mindoro is a much bigger island. No? But um, it's good to hear that uh, that project has been approved and uh, maybe we get updates from NGCP on the timetable because uh, we all know that uh, NGCP has some issues with timetables, you know, so uh, maybe get some updates on that. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, yeah, for the, um, as Chair Mona mentioned, uh, this Batangas Mindoro interconnection is really an important part of our transmission plan. In fact, we first um, asked for approval for this project way back in 2011. Unfortunately, that project, um, that application remained unacted on for more than 10 years. So in 2021, because the, the, um, the face of the transmission grid already changed, we had to refile uh, that petition. And last February 2023, we did receive approval from uh, the ERC for the project, but even having uh, even before the approval was received, we already began the hydrographic survey and site the route selection for that. So we have done pre-construction work, and um, we are already moving forward with that project as committed to the um, committee, to the chair of the committee, and also to um, the local governments of um, Mindoro. Uh, to proceed with the project and fast track it. In fact, we have already coordinated with certain government officials and have gotten their commitment to help us streamline the process, including the um, help we need in getting the documents from the local government units like um, tax declarations to help us um, plot the route properly. And we also try to get the support of the local government to also, again, assist us with the um, right-of-way procurement that, as we know, um, as mentioned by Professor Wally Del Mundo last um, um, hearing, can take as much as 10 years. But because the timeline for this is uh, must be abbreviated we're already trying to get the support of the local um, communities there um i have a quick question for example you're able to procure you're able to uh, get approval for all your permits right of way and whatever lg other permits how long is the actual physical construction of this uh undertaking um for i'm not sure um senator how many towers are involved in this particular project but ordinarily I mean, how many sections, sections for stringing, stringing uh, we'll, we'll have, have to do, and that's also very tricky and very technical. technical. But um, the actual timeline for construction will largely be determined by the route survey and the actual routing that will be determined after that. Okay, done. so timeline. I'm sure with, with the board, you're giving them a timeline. Consider so, so what are, you, what are, what we, are we looking, looking at? at? Yeah. Project, Project um, target, target for, for energization currently, um, assuming all, there are no further delays on, on how we go about it, would be 2027. That's already a very tight timeline, uh, Madam Senator, because um, ordinarily it will, even in more industrialized countries, transmission lines are built anywhere from 10 to 15 years. So this is already a very abbreviated timeline, but this is possible with the full support of the government, national and local level. Well, if uh, Senator Rafi is still chairman of the Committee on Energy, I'm sure he'll be consistently monitoring the progress of this. And he'll still be here 2027, so hopefully we'll, we'll be looking at some positive progress. Thank you, Senator Grace. Now, Honorable on? Chair Tulfo and OMCP comment on Occidental Mindoro. And who's talking? I, uh, Mr. Henotiva po of OMCPC. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead po, Mr. Henotiva. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair. Uh, yeah, in relation to the comment of Honorable Chair Di Malanta, tama po, yung summary ka PSA has three components. So, bunker, solar, and, uh, and diesel. However, in the bid, there are separate computations for for the bunker, for the solar, and for the diesel, and separate metering po yan. So technically, and from a mathematical standpoint, pwede po nating i-compute separately. Although, no, under normal circumstances, bottom line, magbe-blend yung tatlo. But these are not normal circumstances. Kaya we filed for a special joint motion na i-advance implement yung bunker. Now, it, I think it becomes a policy issue of, of ERC, whether to allow that or not. But concern ko lang kasi, welfare ng mga tao. That's why... Whether policy or welfare is important. Okay, thank you. Uh, para Just a quick. Uh, to Chair Mona, uh, Chair Mona, do we do we allow or do we have regulations on blended uh, type of technologies? Do we allow that already? Because before it was one is to one, you know, one PSA, one technology, one yes. contract. No, uh, but we all know that the world has evolved to a one is to one regulatory regime. We have already moved to yeah, blended contracts, multiple technologies. So uh, have we updated our regulatory regime to take into consideration blended technologies and this type of uh, technologies? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Actually, it will be defined by the CSP framework that governed the PSA. So yun naman po, we have actually already approved um, non-plant specific PSAs. Kasi po yun po yung natin, financial contract yes. PSAs. Walang specific plant kasi isa lang yung, isa lang yung presyo, bahal ka at supplier kung saan mo is the source. So the, the ERC has approved those types. But because it's the framework of the CSP that selected and awarded that contract provided for it. Kaya po ang inaaral namin dito, yung CSP ba, 
na nabanggit po ni Mr. Henotiva kanina, um, allowed for separate computation. Pero yung inaward kasi pong rate ay iisa, blended. So ang tininaaral po namin, pwede ba talaga mong i-advance yung certain components? If that is, so yun po yung unang question, pwede mo bang i-allow na isa-isa muna hindi at the same, hindi... Uh, at the same time, in phases, yung projects. That's the first question. The second, if that is allowed, then what rate will apply? Is it that separate computation or, st or still the blended rate? So yun po yung mga kailangan namin i-hurdle because the CSV that was conducted in 2021, so again, it's nabanggit po niya, these are, not, uh, these are extraordinary times. I agree. But nagka-delay din po kasi yung project eh. So hindi po ito na-imagine na magka-come aboard during an extraordinary time. It should have been in place earlier. So, pwede po ba namin i-allow po yung ganun? So, yun pong ganong legal questions yung uh, binubusisi pa po namin before we... But it's issue. possible. It's the, the the ERC has that regulatory yes. regime to uh, come up with uh, rates for blended Apo. blended technologies. Pwede po, pwede uh, po, Your Honor. Right. Kasi po, nasa, yung CSP naman po yung susundin po natin. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wynn. Para makamove na tayo, I would suggest anybody who still wants to uh, make some statements uh, regarding this matter, so Meko, you can submit your position papers.